These are going to be the three biggest trends in cybersecurity in 2023. Hey gang, this is Ron from ITMasterKey.com and my job is to get each and every one of you guys certified. Before I start anything, I want to thank all my current students and all my future students of the Zero to IT Hero program. So it's 2023, right? It's 2023. Uh, the economy is weird. The R word keeps on popping up as far as recession, so on and so forth. So you may want to figure out what do I need to do, what do I need to be at, what do I need to get to, to do the things that I need to do. Now we want to pinpoint and talk about cybersecurity. I think there's really three big things that we need to be paying attention to that allow you to navigate and go ahead and get into cybersecurity or level up in cybersecurity to actually have the skill that you need to progress and get to the bag. So in 2022, and I think moving forward to 2023, one of the biggest threats or one of the biggest trends in cybersecurity was ransomware, right? So ransomware took down a lot of companies. So there, there was a lot of data breaches, right? So let's talk about data for a minute, right? So data is super important. You know, Facebook, you know, Zucks got in trouble for maybe doing things with people data that you may not <laughs> like, you may not agree with, right? So since we're on a data conversation, data has made Google, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, go down the list billions, if not trillions of dollars, right? Because they get your data, right? They see what you're looking at on Facebook. They see what you're looking at on YouTube. They see what you're looking at on Google and they sell that data to advertisers, right? So it's not magic. It's not uh, the universe showing you different things. It's just that they know what you like, right? So for example, let's say that you go down the master IT rabbit hole. You start looking at A plus stuff. You start looking at certification stuff. You start looking at motivation stuff. You're going to start seeing more and more cybersecurity related stuff. You're going to start seeing more and more videos of me. You may even see an advertisement for me, right? So let's say that you saw one of our advertisements or commercials for training before this video started. It's because the algorithm, YouTube, Google, use your data to see, okay, this is what this person's like. Let's go ahead and show them some more of this stuff. So that's why ransom is, I mean, excuse me, that's why data is so important because that's what advertisers use to make money. That's what Facebook uses to make money. That's how Facebook makes money is off of advertising, right? YouTube, so on and so forth. So when it comes to ransomware, a attacker or organization, a virus or software will use your data against you, right? So what ransomware does is it may hide inside of a, a weird website. Weird is however you define it. Um, it may hide in an email. It may hide inside of an application, right? And what ransomware does is it holds your data. It holds your device. It holds your application hostage and it asks you for a ransom, right? A lot of times um, it's through cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency isn't as easily traceable um, as a cash app or uh, sending them money through Zelle or Western Union, so on and so forth, right? So they'll hold your ransom. Why the hell do I keep saying that? They'll hold your data for a ransom, right? And the ransom may not always be monetary. So let's say that you um, are a political senator, or you're a mayor, or you're uh, a big businessman. They may want you to do certain things. They may want you to buy certain things. They may want you to not buy certain things. They may want you to say certain things. They may want you to do certain things and say, hey, if you do this, we'll give your data back. If you don't do this, we're going to give it to the entire internet, right? <laughs> All bad. So that's one of those things that you got to really, 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 really be cognizant of, right? If you're in an organization and you can muster up some training, figure out some training, because that's one of the biggest things is user training, right? Let's say if they do get under a ransomware attack, what are they supposed to do? Who are they supposed to call? Should they do anything? Should they pay the ransom? So on and so forth. Because That's another thing. Some ransomware attacks are so sophisticated. That's actually some homework for you guys. I want you to uh, go ahead and research a ransomware attack, right? And in the comments below, tell us about it, all right? This company um, had was underneath a ransomware attack and this happened. And then the funny thing is in your research, guess what you're gonna find? You're gonna find 
a lot of companies that actually had to pay the ransom, right? If they don't say that they captured anybody or, or they say it was resolved, nine times out of 10, they had to pay the ransom because the hackers had some information that they did not want to get out, whether it's hospital records, uh, the person was doing some weird shit that they don't want anybody else to know about, so on and so forth, right? So I think one of the biggest trends, one of the biggest things that you really, really need to be focusing on in cybersecurity is ransomware, how to prevent it, user education, what they need to do when things go left and so on and so forth, right? Uh, but that's one of the biggest things is user education because some users, like I said, they may pay this shit or they may just say, oh, I don't know what they're talking about. And then, it, you know, other computers get infected, but ransomware is one of those big ones. So before we move forward, I want to give a huge shout out to a few places, right? The first place is Spain. Spain has shown me so much love with super thanks. The next is Canada. Canada been showing man, the Master IT channel a lot of love and last but not least good old usaa usaa the usa right um we've got a bunch of channel members from the u.s we don't have any channel members from outside the u.s um so some of you guys are giving those super thanks go ahead and join the channel so you can get some members only videos and those one-on-one -on -one chats that we have right the second big thing that i want to talk about and most companies are implementing to kind of prevent these data breaches or not necessarily prevent those data breaches but to prevent the overall scope and damage of these data breaches is multi-factor authentication this is absolutely awesome right so somebody gets your password they don't got your phone somebody gets your phone but they ain't got your password right so multi-factor authentication is that you have to have multiple different things that go through multiple different avenues to gain access to something, right? For example, there's a bunch of different ways that people can get authenticated, right? It could be from something they know, such as a password or a PIN, something they have, such as an ID badge or some type of other security token. It can even be what they are, like their position, or they're a doctor, they're a lawyer, they're the CTO, so on and so forth. And they can get authenticated to a platform, organization, a building, and so on and so forth. Now, you're probably more familiar with multi-factor authentication when you're logging into your bank or when you're logging into Facebook or when you're logging into stuff like that, right? So a lot of times, it'll ask you something that you know. What's your password? Boom, you put your password in. Then the very next thing is probably gonna be geared to something that you have have right so it'll send a code or a message to your phone and then you have to input that into your device or into the application that way it'll give you a little bit more security so if somebody has your password they don't have your phone right and that's another thing if you keep on getting random codes uh your login code is 8722 and then you get another one you get another one you get another one it's probably because one of your accounts has been compromised but also you got to be smarter than the average bear and human you got to make sure that that's not a scam as well because they may just text you like oh your account has been compromised putting in two three four seven on this app and like what the hell are they talking about and you click on it and then now you actually get ransomware now you actually um talk to somebody you think you're at the help desk you think you're getting uh, access back to your stuff but you're actually on the hotline with a scammer right that's another thing gang uh cyber security is super important super volatile and super is really needed right because believe it or not in this country and outside this country there's literally call centers full of scammers you know whenever you get that call that says potential spam they have a whole damn call center just like verizon just like uh, the water company just like anywhere else has uh, call centers right the scammers have full call centers i'm talking about with managers uh mid-level people and just the people that's on the phone and they literally they got quotas they got uh you know i got to scam at least 100 people today whatever the hell it is right uh, for them to get paid or how, however that works right so uh, multi-factor authentication tries to help with that and you got to understand that the scammers don't give a damn They'll call a thousand people, 10,000 people. They don't need a few people to be dummies. They don't need a few people to fall for it. And I think multi-factor authentication can help out a lot, right? Because unless somebody has your password, your phone, and knows all these damn security questions, that's the only way that they can really get into um, your most vital accounts. Now, one thing that is unfortunate, and one thing that I never trusted anyway, is password 
managers, right? Meaning that you just put all your passwords in this little vault and wherever you go, your password is already in there and it's safe because it's inside this program. It's inside of um, this uh, little app. Now we found out that wasn't true because it's something called last pass, meaning that this is the last password you're gonna have to remember. Just remember last pass or uh, last, it's called last pass is the application. And you put your password in there and then you put all your passwords for your different applications inside that password. So it's like, okay, great. All I got to remember is this one password and it'll automatically log me in. It's safe, blah, blah, blah. But what happens when LastPass gets hacked, which it did, right? Millions and millions of people got hacked, right? The entire scope is still trying to be seen as far as the damage. So that's one of the things that you got to definitely be careful of. Um, I don't really use password managers like that just because of that one single point of failure. You know, you never want to have a single point of failure. So the last thing I want to talk about is artificial intelligence. This is a current trend is booming. It's going to continue to boom. Um, artificial intelligence is a type of software, is a type of program that tries to mimic the way that our brains work. Meaning that we try to figure out how to do things easier, how to do things faster, how to do things quicker, right? To avoid the pain of failure, to avoid wasting time. But the only thing um, about artificial intelligence, especially the really, really good ones, is like this. With us, it may take weeks or months. With artificial intelligence, it makes corrections immediately. Okay, I, I suck at this, I suck at that. Let me read this, let me read that, right? And that's all inside of the program, right? Now you have some AI, that um, helps you, right? It's for the good guys. And then you have adversarial AI, which is actually working against you, right? Now, either or, depending on who's using it, can be good or bad, right? So if you have still have no idea what I'm talking about, if on your timeline, maybe a couple months ago or even now, you saw people rendering pictures, right? Where it would be them on the moon, them looking off, them looking real distinguished, but it would seem like kind of cartoony or it would just seem different. It would they were using something called the Linza app, right? And it was using artificial intelligence to see, okay, what angles are the best for you? How would you look? Okay, from the picture that you have, if you have glasses on, okay, maybe let's put him in a library. If you have um, a tattoo on your face, maybe let's put him, um, you know, in front of a Ferrari, whatever it is, right? It was using artificial intelligence from the people that was uploading pictures and the people that were doing stuff to make better pictures and to uh, be more creative, so on and so forth, right? Another one would be that came out recently was an AI for coders, right? A bunch of coders uh, were making videos videos, a bunch of developers making videos because I think it's called Chap GPT or GTT or something like that. Um, put it in the comments um, if you, um, just to correct me, I know it's Chap something, I can't remember. They were using that or that's being used now to automate code, right? Because coding and developing is, is not easy. Uh, and it's a great skill to set the hand, but it's not easy. And a lot of people were worried like, oh, this may take over coders. I don't think it's going to necessarily take over coders. I think, you know, smart coders are going to use that to their advantage. Okay. Let me go ahead and automate this and then clean up the things that it may get wrong. Or, you know, maybe let me automate this and it may make a better product. That's going to make me better. Okay. Next time I do it, I'm gonna do it like this, I'll do it like that. And just add on top of, what I already have, but definitely AI is going to be one of those things that continue to grow, right? The algorithm is uh, artificial intelligence, right? As it gets more data, as it gets more information, it figures out what you like, right? So if you go to, um, if you log into YouTube and a bunch of bullshit pops up, that's because that's what you like. You like fight videos. You like, I don't know, toxic relationship videos. You like scam videos, whatever the hell you like, right? That's what the algorithm, that's what the artificial intelligence is using, is just using the data. Because remember, data is like the new currency, right? If you got somebody's data, you can sell to them, you can shut them down, you can shut them out, so on and so forth. But I think that those three things are the biggest, biggest trends in 2023 for cybersecurity. Now, if you want to get into cybersecurity, you can hit the link in the description and head over to itmagicsecurity.com where we have training in cybersecurity, cloud networking, and all the skills that you need to really break into IT in 2023. 2023 is the year to make that transition. 2023 is the year to make it happen. All right. You need to get in something that's going to 
avert the recession or you ain't gonna have to worry about the recession because a lot of people are gonna get laid off. A lot of people are going to get fired. A lot of jobs are going to disappear. So uh, make that happen. You heard it here first. Other than that, I'll see you in class.